It is me, Martin Luther King Jr., the only civil rights leader who ever lived. I had a dream, and it came true. So the rest of you Negroes can leave it alone now. This video is brought to you by the members of my Patreon. Click the link in the description if you want to join. You can also go to letsflaunt.com if you want to get some merch to support the channel that way. Testosterone levels are declining 10% per decade. You have to have strong men. If you don't, it's not going to go well. Medical and pharmaceutical companies are poisoning us, but you're not allowed to notice this is happening. If men can't reproduce, then the world's over. We're headed for a calamity. Weaponizing victimhood seems a bit aggressive to say, right? Because who am I to say that somebody is not a victim of something or doesn't feel like they're a victim? There's being a victim of something and feeling like you are a victim of something. I know we're entering into some tricky moral territory here, ethical, maybe even legal, but just, just follow me on this thought journey, okay? When I am looking at tangible, real world situations that are happening, where there is a number that we can look at and go, oh, there's a disproportionate rate of X number of people being imprisoned, being unhoused, being poor, being uneducated, being in debt, any of the things that push you to the margins of society. If I look and see statistically X group is more likely to be in that situation. However, they represent a way smaller amount of the population, that's what we mean when we say disproportionality, then for me, the victims of whatever topic, system, thing we're talking about are those people, are the people that can be identified in that X group. And I know that seems very analytical and kind of cold, but as hippy dippy, lovey dovey, let's all get along as I am, I also try to be very practical. And sometimes you just have to look at literal numbers. History, numbers, context. Feelings are in there. We'll talk about feelings too, because they all inform that. But yes, when I am talking about folks weaponizing victimhood, I'm talking more so about those that have political power or wealth and power to enact actual changes on our everyday lives. And those that are in the media or in charge of the media that gets disseminated, that affects the narratives that craft our everyday lives. If you're not somebody that falls for it and everybody else is sheeple to you, then this video isn't for you. Go with God. Okay? Okay. I would argue that in the 2010s, at least what I observed in my lifetime, was that we became more compassionate to victim stories. And I think the Me Too movement was a big factor in that. You have people that say, believe victims now, and it's a full sentence, period, that's it. We not only started having more compassion for victims, we started centering victims. And I think that's a really important distinction because when folks started to speak out more throughout the 2010s about police brutality and 2020 kind of was the explosion of all of that. You had more groups creating movements that were specific to the way their group, their identity is marginalized and victimized under this system. And system is the invisible all around us. It's the thing you can't quite point at, but it's reflected in our policies. It's reflected in all these industrial complexes everybody likes to throw around. That's the system. The way things work and move in our society. And so after Black Lives Matter, you see things like Stop Asian Hate and more awareness around Asian and indigenous people's struggles. And this is something you saw during the civil rights movement. Black folks started being like, enough of this shit. And other groups as well felt empowered to speak out too. And I'm not saying black folks started fighting for your rights, okay, girl. But unfortunately, you know, every single time marginalized folks are having a good time, here come the elite trying to ruin it. Co-opting, just like woke and canceled, the language of how people articulated real experiences of being victimized under this system, the way this world operates, especially in this part of the world. But like you just started having folks on the right really pushing this victim narrative of 
We're not allowed to have rights anymore. We're not allowed to have free speech. We're not allowed to do anything anymore because progressives and liberals just want to throw humanity in our faces. Girl, what's going on? <laughs> okay, 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 giving them compassion because you know I like to work my empathy, compassion muscle even when I, I really don't feel like it. Individuals. I'm going to have more compassion for because a lot of them maybe do have these real principled beliefs or grew up with certain beliefs, religious, whatever. And so I'm going to meet them with more grace. But these media folks, these politicians that are actually gaining clout and power and still acting like they're the victims of something when they're the ones who actually are able to control and craft narratives is real nefarious. It's not cute, it's unbecoming, stop it. Like they don't listen to me. A recent example that I used in a video was Tucker Carlson's The End of Men, you know? Men are becoming soy boys, soft boys. It's it's terrible and it's because people on the left just want them to be all in their fifis and not, be men. What the heck is going on? We are victims. Anytime you try to be a man, somebody's trying to shut you down. Girl, what? See, the problem with this is that folks like that, that are in these positions of power that have huge audiences and can craft large narratives. I know I fall in the middle somewhere. I know, I know, I don't know, because I'd be like, I have an audience, but I'm not like out here, but I'm out here. But like, anyway, they use this victimization to avoid accountability and to avoid actually having to see the humanity in other people besides themselves and who they deem worthy of their humanity. If you're the victim, you don't have to, to take accountability. You were the one that was harmed. You were the one that was wronged. You did nothing wrong. Everything was done to you. And I'm sorry, but I refuse to believe that when you're in such a high position of power and authority and you have such a large following and people that literally worship the ground that you walk on and everything you do and say, and you instill that in the audience too, when you have the ability to change actual public policy that affects everybody's everyday lives, what are you a victim of? Sound like Kanye was, no one man should have all this power. Oh my God, this is terrible. I have so much. And these little peons, are trying to tell me how to dish it out. You little bitches want rights? Shut the fuck up. Stop it. The fact that you're even making me aware of how disenfranchised you are is actually really not good for my mental health and it's actually really damaging and selfish and I wish you poor bitches would stop. That's how y'all sound, some of y'all. I'm saying y'all, they're not gonna see this, but you... It, what about those of us that don't have that much power? Amy, I gotta talk to you, girl. Amy, we gotta talk. So a lot of us are keeping our eyes on what's going on with Israel and Palestine right now. And a lot of celebrities and public figures are weighing in all the things, right? Amy Schumer has been talking a lot. For those of you that don't know, Amy Schumer is an American actress and comedian, and she is also Jewish. So she has a personal emotional stake in this. And you can tell by the things that she's been posting. Now, the way Amy Schumer is moving has people on a varying spectrum of emotions there's the folks that fully support her and are on her side and like yes and then there are the folks that are like shut shut the fuck up shut the fuck up shut, sh <laughs> you know but what did she do on october 7th when hamas went into israel and attacked all those civilians she posted one of the videos or a few videos and one of the captions was jews are the only people not allowed to defend themselves then she posted this political cartoon. And for those of you that can't see the text on screen, it's a bunch of protesters. Looks like most of them are white, though some are black and brown. And they're holding up signs like Gazans grape Jewish girls only in self-defense. Beheading is resistance with this little girl smiling. Killing kids for dignity. Uh, proud of our grapist martyrs, stab Jews for Allah. The, I didn't see that one. That is wild. Wow, Amy. <laughs> okay. 
somebody in the back just has a shirt that says i love hamas uh murdering 1300 jews is an anti-semitic you know just a lot of of really vile things and that did not sit well with a lot of people and if you don't understand why let me break it down when you post something like that you're conflating not only palestinians with hamas but all muslims with hamas so an actress named asia jackson tweeted that it's wild that amy schumer could say something like that when bella and Gigi hadid had to be so like tiptoey around their statements to make sure they don't lose their jobs and all that sort of stuff and amy schumer said into her dms and was all like what's up she was all like did my post about my people being massacred upset you and Asia was like, yeah, the Islamophobia. Words were exchanged. Amy Schumer was talking about how unsafe she was feeling, how this girl has no idea what this feels like because she gets death threats. Amy Schumer gets death threats, people threatening her son, doxing her, showing, taking pictures of her house. And Asia is black and Asian and her mom is Asian. And she straight up was like, the audacity of you to tell me that I don't know what it feels like to feel unsafe. You know, it just was really not a good look, truly. Um, but we're not done. And at some point, Amy Schumer posted a video of MLK speaking out against anti-Semitism because yes, of course, MLK's daughter had to tweet her and be like, Miss Girl, lovingly, okay. Uh, yeah, my dad was against anti-Semitism because you can't be for civil rights and be for that. However, he was also against militarism. I don't think a nonviolent civil rights advocate that is against anti-Semitism would be for the indiscriminate bombing of a civilian population. I just don't personally think that's the case, but a lot of y'all, this is how y'all, y'all think, this is how y'all be, roll the clip. <laughs> This is my impersonation of the Martin Luther King that you all quote, we want black people to shut up. It is me, Martin Luther King Jr., the only civil rights leader who ever lived. I had a dream and it came true. So the rest of you Negroes can leave it alone now. Why are you protesting in the street? I would have never inconvenienced those nice white people like that. They're just trying to get to work. It is actually against the law for any black person to say something that contradicts anything that I said. So if you hear it, tell them I'm disappointed in them and that it is illegal to say that. Everybody loves me now, just like everybody loved me back then. It's why I died of natural causes at the age of 98. I only gave one speech. Don't Google it. I'm sure the person who was quoting me to you would have supported me back then as well. Just ask their parents or their grandparents what they thought about me. Eventually she posted a notes app sort of apology with the comments on because before this her comments were off. And while I was looking up stuff for this video, sh this post was there. Thankfully I screenshot it because it has now been deleted. What I want is every hostage back. I want safety and freedom from Hamas for Palestinians and Israelis. I want safety for Jewish people and Muslims as well. Everyone, just like you, I want peace. You will never see me wishing harm on anyone. Saying I'm Islamophobic or that I like genocide is crazy. Saying somebody likes genocide is kind of wild, y'all, but I can understand why her actions and the stuff that she was posting would lead you to be like, well, girl, what is it then? I understand. It's just, it, it's also wild. What? Okay. But here's where I want to talk about individuals and this centering of certain victims over others and whatnot, right? Because at the end of the day, we all have biases. We all have our lived experiences culture, society, whatever, that's going to impact who we feel for versus who we don't, who we view as in our universe of obligation, that term coined by Helen Fine to refer to those that we believe deserve not just rights and privileges or whatever, but to whose grievances deserve amends. Who do we owe what to? To the people that we owe something to. Those are in our universe of obligation versus the rest of you bitches and that philosophical idea of empathy as a spotlight it shines the brightest for you and yours closest around you those most similar to you maybe even and then it gets dimmer the further out you go yes our awareness of victims has become more compassionate we've centered them more we have become more aware of the ways that different people can be victimized and the intersections of that by this system and yet some of us care about collective group activism 
to combat those things. So real liberation means liberation for all, means caring about all, means doing this work together, solidarity, right? And then there's the individualistic group activism. And that's the thing that I think a lot of folks, particularly those of us socialized in, in Western societies, tend to latch on to and mistake it for solidarity. And this is what I think I'm noticing with Amy Schumer and other folks like her, folks that have even sent me DMs, not like yelling at me or anything like that of the sort, but just being like almost getting the vibe that they're trying to be like, hey, care about us too, care about us too. And multiple things can be true and happening at the same time. And that who we center when it comes to narratives about and actual situations of victimization, whether it's the system or war or any of that, can teach us a lot about where our cracks are. When we center the most marginalized, the most disenfranchised, the most disproportionately disenfranchised, and we go, what do you need? I personally believe that it can teach us a lot about how we can be better for all of us by looking at the most disenfranchised, right? A quick little example that I think of, need to thank disability activists more for the work that they did in the Disability Rights Act something as simple as ramps. Yes, somebody that's physically disabled might need a ramp, but ramps are also helpful for plenty of other people. If you are elderly, if you've had a procedure recently, little kids, like there are so many different, if you have a stroller, there are so many different benefits that the rest of us get to have simply because activists that were the most ignored because we be ignoring disability activists. We really do. I have blind spots in my disability. Is that, is that ableist? See, I just said blind spots. Is that ableist? I have gaps in my knowledge as well. So I'm not saying this as a judgment, but I'm just saying the most ignored can be the canaries in the coal mine for the way our society can function better and actually allow the folks that everyone says that they seem to care about equally to actually have more equality. And so when folks like Amy Schumer, the folks that are DMing me will send me the messages to say the, Amy Schumer hasn't messaged me, but just like act in this way of like the care about us, center us, anti-Semitism is on the rise. I understand the real place that you're coming from as individuals, not like random politicians and stuff weaponizing your victimhood to gain more power, but individuals who have a stake in this and I want you to stop and go, why do I need my personal identity, my individual identity to be the center of this when everybody else is focusing on war crimes and human rights violations? It's not to say that they don't care about what started this event, at least in the month of October, or at least that's from my perspective. I'm well aware of the history of anti-Semitism, not just because of the Holocaust, but before that. That's also something that I had to learn when I decided to take a couple years and learn about Israel and Palestine. Colonialism will divide and rule the live long day and have marginalized people in fighting with each other over who is more marginalized, fighting with each other over who should be centered more. When if I just look at the numbers, the definition of war crimes, what the Human Rights Watch has to say about what's been going on with Israel and Palestine, I have to call for a ceasefire. I have to go. So Netanyahu just just really said, fuck, fuck human lives, truly, unless they are Jewish and Israeli. That, how is that not wild to y'all? How do you hear over 4,000 children dead and you're still like, but nobody's paying enough attention to my thing. If you care about actual solidarity and not just solidarity, if you care about people showing up for you when it matters, you have to show up for them too. And if we're all doing this game of, well, I'm not going to show up if you don't show up. So whatever, then who the fuck is going to show up? Sorry, that, that got a little, that got a little mean. That got a little, listen, it's time to talk about solidarity because y'all, the reason that I get so 
upset about not just folks like Amy Schumer behaving in the way that she is or people slide into my DMs trying to what it seems like to me convince me that Jewish lives matter is that I'm like, girl, I I believe Jewish lives matter. What? what? Where is the disconnect? What is happening here? And the thing that I keep coming back to, so grain of salt, this is just my opinion, my observations, my thoughts. There could be plenty of other factors at play here. But what I keep coming back to is that we have adopted this individualistic group activism where we just care about our group, our specific people, because we're so used to others not showing up in solidarity or not expecting others to, except for maybe a few people from different groups. And so because of that, if what's happening to the way, to the real way that folks that fall in our identity group are being victimized, isn't being centered enough. Yeah, isn't being centered and the priority narrative, we feel like nobody cares and nobody will ever care. When I think what's happening right now is people are trying to practice more of a global solidarity. And that means showing up for the people of Palestine, first and foremost, not ignoring that there are 1400 people that were killed and there are still hundreds of hostages. But y literal human rights, y'all, I don't understand how, like I, I genuinely don't understand how me saying that is a controversial statement. Like people have asked me, oh, are you getting worried about job opportunities and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, no, because I know what I stand for and I know what I think is right and wrong. And I also know that I just look at research and numbers. And if that many people are being killed, if the number is steadily going up for one group, y'all, if they don't give a fuck about those lives, why do you think they're gonna care about yours more? Because you're in the same group as them? This is the part that isn't cute, and this is where I give a little less compassion, is that some of y'all, I think, have had the privilege of having your narrative centered a lot, and so now that it's not, you don't know how to be in solidarity with others because people have always had to show up for you, but you don't show up for other people. And examples that I'm specifically thinking of, because I don't want people putting words in my mouth or thoughts in my brain, the way we show up as queer folks for black causes, not all queer people do it, but a lot of us do. And then when queer folks need the support of all black folks to come together, let's say, a lot of cis straight people are nowhere to be found. Or even other queer people when trans folks are fighting up for their rights. You know what I mean? It's like, we're supposed to be in this together. We're all marginalized in this together. And yet I show up for you, but you don't ever show up for me. And you're used to when a black man is stopped by a cop or if there is an incident, incident of police brutality and it involves a black man, all of us showing up, you're used to having that centering, at least in this specific instance is what I'm talking about. And so if I look outwards, like I've learned about the Holocaust since I was a kid. What they should have been teaching us about is more of the other anti-Semitism that Europe was perpetuating because it's easy to have a one evil big bad and that man is Hitler. You're, where did Hitler get the ideas of anti-Semitism from? <laughs> a lot of these global superpowers, colonial powers, don't wanna teach the real history because if they did, we'd all realize that this is all nonsense. We'd all realize that sowing division amongst other marginalized people victimized in similar ways, not in the exact same ways, but victimized in similar ways to varying degrees by these systems of oppression. That's why they're called systems of oppression. The way the world is around us of oppression. Sowing division amongst all of us, class division amongst all of us so that we don't see the real big bad so that we miss the forest for the trees. The trees is all this infighting. The forest is colonial patriarchal hegemonic capitalism. That's the culprit, baby. That's her. She's the forest. And that's a mouthful and it sounds like I'm just saying all of those words because I read them on Instagram slides. I actually really do engage with this work. And those that have political power, the wealth and political power to enact changes, to keep the forest the exact same way it is, they're the ones we need to be looking at and holding accountable. They're not victims. I talk about Fred Hampton a few times on this channel because I really do appreciate the way he was able to bring people together 
to organize an actual rainbow coalition that involved not just black people, poor white folks, indigenous Americans, Latinos, Mexican Americans. Like there's, and I'm sure he worked with immigrants, not because, and if he didn't, it would surprise me, but, but he didn't just talk his politics. He also walked them. He cared about rights and liberation for all. And when he said for all, he meant that solidarity amongst the most marginalized. And that's what I care about too. Solidarity amongst the most marginalized. None of us are free until all of us are. And the folks that have excluded themselves from the all are the elites that are not a part of this world, that want to move above and beyond it, that extract the world and its people and exploit the world and its people for its resources and whatever you can get. Maybe you might contribute a little here and there just so you don't look like a terrible person, but those are the people that we're talking about when we say elites, at least for me. And the all is the people that are actually here, willing to work together. One of my online mutuals who you've seen on the channel before, Raven, said something in a recent live that I really appreciated. And Raven, for context, is a community organizer and has been doing this work for a long time. But she said, but she said something along the lines of, we all need to get through this and we need to help each other to do this. And I appreciated that so much because in this context, she was speaking about how people enact the sort of lateral violence and, and how others show up, how others show up in solidarity. And we're all gonna show up in different ways, but the most important thing is that we show up for each other. When we're centering ourselves, instead of stopping and going, okay, I can still feel the way that I feel, advocate for what I wanna advocate for, and understand that this is a group project. And right now, the group is working on this one thing. It doesn't mean that we're gonna ignore or dismiss what else is going on, but we're all focused on this one thing because it's power in numbers. But if you don't feel like your struggle is tied to mine, then of course you'll practice this individualistic group activism because your group is all you care about. You don't care about solidarity. But then I wonder how you expect others to show up for you if you only care about you and yours. I would offer that you can care about more than one thing at once and you can advocate for more than one thing at once. I have made it a point to let y'all know that I'm not down, we're, we're not over here promoting anti-Semitism or these conspiracy theories and stuff on this channel. And I'm fundraising for Palestine and sharing resources on how to learn about this conflict, especially because if you live in this part of the world, you've gotten one perspective and one side. So how about learning the other to see and inform your own opinion. I did that, spent the last two years doing that, inform my own opinion, and have been talking with friends and people that have also spent time learning about this so that I can not just only appeal to some of my more radical impulses, but also understand that in a practical way, what actually would have to happen for peace, Lord, Lord, that's a whole other, anyway. I know some of you may see this and be like, well, still, fuck Amy Schumer. The stuff that she's doing, I can't move past it and blah, blah, blah. That's your right. I care about bridging gaps. Sometimes I'm better at doing that than other times, but I really do think that it is important for us to come together, y'all. Come together with a focus in mind, because if we can do that, if this boycotting Starbucks thing is, is, is really has does its thing for three months and we all just are like, no, and we force them to actually have to change their policies and things, I just think sky's the limit. Once people start to get a taste of how powerful they are, I'm kidding, because that's a scary, slippery slope. Careful, careful that we not become the evil we deplore. But anyway, yeah, I hope y'all are calling your representatives and showing up and showing out, checking in on your pals, taking breaks when you need to, because we all need to. And yeah, showing up in a way that you can and not allowing yourself to get burnt out because that's what the man wants. The man wants you to be burnt out. The man wants us to not be in solidarity, Amy because it's easier for the man to continue to subjugate us.
as always, be sure to feed your plets, water your plets, and remember that you can always change your mind because you can. And I will. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. It looks like I just wear the same outfit, right? I essentially do, but it's just variations. I love a black turtleneck, a leather jacket, and some sunglasses. I like looking like Shaft and Morpheus, okay? I'm their non-binary daughter, what can I say? And, ooh, not the light going out again. That's something, something, walking down the street and talking like Mr. Super Screw. Shaft! Yeah, baby. Y'all, we just gonna have to deal. Thinking very white, that song. I've been walking and talking to myself for about four hours now. Love is really a hurting thing. Let the music play. I just want to dance the night away. Yeah, right here, right here is where I'm going to stay. All night long. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let the music play. Lydia, come. I'm so annoying. I'm always like, Lydia. She's like, girl, leave me alone. Maybe. Maybe surprise. This mic isn't on. It's not. It's not on. You're obsessed. Leave me alone. There's a lot of cat hair on it. But I'm obsessed with her. I just want to hang out with you. We try to grab her, Lydia. <laughs> there you are. Come here, Lydia. Come here. Come here, girl. This way. Here. I'm gonna place you over here. Well, I'm gonna pet you first. So Lydia, you just said fuck me, huh? I wanted you to come sit up here, Lydia. I saved you a spot. Right here. Your spot, right here. That's all I was trying to get you to do. You guys. You guys. <laughs> Look who it is! This bitch right here! This bitch right here said hi! Hi! You wanna come hang out, Tony boy? A hoe. Face down, ass up. Look at her. Girl. That's my baby. <laughs> now. Look at the booty pad. Yeah, you do. Rub your cat's booties. They love it. Well, some of them do. I don't know. I'm not responsible if you get scratched. I need to get this kind of flexibility in my back. You know what I'm saying? You cutie patootie. You hear a little purr, a little pigeon purr. I love you. I love you.